chief support this evening here in Leeds is for the British Super Bantamweight Championship. Will you welcome to the ring, making his way at this time, the challenger from County Durham, Thomas Patrick Vincent from the famous Everton Red Defence. Will he hang on to the title? Or is Thomas Ward going to get some measure of family retribution? Interesting, John, isn't it? And Ward has been actually sparring his, his brother in, in the run up to this one, apparently. And yeah, he's got a he's got a hard job on his hands here against the tricky South boring Dickens. But just looking at first impressions there, he's working well with his jab. Will he try and box Dickens at range? Try and catch him with that right hand. There it was there. Masses of respect between yeah. the two camps, and I sensed an awful lot of respect between the two fighters. Absolutely. It, it, it really is a good contest on paper, this one. Ward, remember, never been 12 rounds before, so that's another test for him. Dickens has been to 12 rounds a couple of times. More experienced man is Dickens. And they're not really big punches either of them, are they? Only seven no. knockouts for Dickens and only two knockouts for Ward, so... We could be in for a long night here, John. And similar similar sort of physique, aren't they? Similar sort of build. OK, you've got one the South for one fighting orthodox, but physically there's not a lot of disparity between them. I think Ward's got the uh, the bulk of the crowd support. He's got a, some vociferous supporters who've travelled down from West Rainton. Proud member of the travelling community, of course. He was, uh, I was talking to him about the uh, the old Appleby Horse Fair, the big gathering every year that there is up there in Westmoreland, as, as it once was. And he said, get yourself up there. Come on, come and enjoy it. <laughs> I might just do that one year. I might just do it. You can come as my mind. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. You're on your own there. Bit of a scouting mission here, John, for both boxers. Dickens just working better. As I was going to say, that are coming forward, but then he gets caught with that right hand. Nice, fast, accurate jab from Ward. Deep Robbie Turley and an eliminator for the British title. He's now the Commonwealth champion, of course, Turley. And Thomas celebrating his 23rd birthday on Monday. Still a relative baby in boxing terms. And he's boxed quite nicely in this opening round. He's not been fake. 12 rounder, of course, this for the British title, the famous Lonsdale belt, the prize. As well as a few quid. A lot of interest in this fight. It's a, a good trade fight, as they say. A lot of interest within the boxing world about how this one's going to unfold. I think everybody who studies their boxing and watches these this level if you like they know that this is going to be good they know it's going to be tight sure Jazza who's got his second child due later this month so that's a bit of an incentive it's certainly a thinking man's fight this one John both boxers just just trying to find a way through the opponent's guard Dickens was the ABA bantamweight champion seven years ago now just find Ward there, that's good work from Ward. Fast straight punches. I think what's impressive from Ward at this stage, John, he's not going just wading in, is he? He's just waiting on the outside. He's looking to land that right hand. He's moving his feet into position. There is the right hand there. Quick acceleration with the feet. So that's clever boxing from the outside. And then he's taking his opportunities by just quicking the feet up and then sending that right hand down. That's, that's clever boxing. There's probably got to be a change of tempo from Dickens here. It needs to be. Ward was super confident in the run-up to this, and he really did believe that he got his tactics right and that he knew exactly what he had to do. And there's a nice right hand there. Take a bit of this. Well, he's smiling a little bit ruefully because he knows that Ward is picking him off a little. He's trying to walk him down. He's trying to find... He's finding it difficult to find clean shots, Jazza. His reactions have got to be a little bit quicker when Ward's coming towards him, John. That's his problem. Ward has been... Like I said, he's quick with the feet, he's in and out, there he is again, not trying to land shots, and Dickens has got to react quick, quicker to that. 
and he hasn't done it so far. Well, the pattern has really continued a little bit as it did in the opening round. For me, Ward has just looked that wee bit sharper as we come to the bell to end. I thought Ward did enough again, John, there. There's not a lot in the first two rounds, but for me, Ward's just doing the, the more eye-catching work with those fast darting, raiding attacks that he's doing. and probably just nicking the rounds here and there. I think there's got to be a tempo change, like I said, from Dickens. He's waiting a little bit too long, and he's not reacting quick enough when his opponent's coming forward. So there's got to be a change from him somewhere here. Ward turned pro when he was 18 with Dave Garside, well known figure up there in the northeast, and that's no knockdown, of course, a stumble and uh, no clean punch landed. And Dickens is having a little bit of a telling off from referee Michael Alexander. Keep it clean, he says. Dickens, I'm sure, just wants to turn this into a brawl a little bit more than he has done so far. He needs to get Ward out of this rhythm which he's settled into. The more, the more he waits, the more the, the more then grows into the contest and it seems to be dictating the pace. Dickens there had a little bit of success. There was a shot that went in, although uh, when Ward went to the, to the ground, but it wasn't a knockdown. But it was because Dickens just upped it a little bit and started to went forward a little bit more. He's waiting probably a little bit too long. That's his problem. And uh, you see, that's, that's a little bit better from him. But Ward's definitely more fleet-footed, isn't he? Well, you could argue that it's a, a step up in class for Ward, certainly on the basis on the back of the uh, fights he's had before, with all due respect to Robbie Turley. But this is the needed it. He could do with just putting his foot on the accelerator in the last 30 seconds to make sure he catches the judge's eyes. Three guys sitting round ringside. Victor Lockram, John Keane, and right in front of us, Howard Foster who, of course, can't hear a word that we're saying, would never be swayed by the way we see it. Last few seconds of the third round. Maybe a better round for Dickens, but has he done enough to take it to tie one? Rounding the bell, and the action underway once again in the fourth round. And as close as we suspected it might be. Dickens swinging himself off balance. Ward trying to punish him. Dickens doing well to cover up. And really, not a lot landed of consequence. Saw Mickey Van sitting on the far side of the ring over there, one of our best referees. About three rows behind Frank Warren there at, uh, on the far side. You can just catch a look of him there in the dark glasses. Do you have a referee, any of yours? I can't remember, John, to be honest. <laughs> But he was a very good referee, was Mickey Van, and uh, a ballroom dancer, I believe, John. Yeah, and worked as a, a bit kid. like yourself. Worked. <laughs> you are joking. As a kid, he worked in a circus as well, and uh, for many years was involved in the training of the Leeds Rugby League club, as well as being a top class in and out with defeat. He's he's playing a frustrating game for, for Dickens. He won't hold and, and, and trade. He's just staying on the outside. He's trying to draw the lead of Dickens and make him fall short. And then he's going back with fast counters. And if Dickens doesn't actually um, throw first, he's in and out very quickly and beats him to the punch. Clever, clever boxing from Ward. Yeah, the right hand has been a, a punch which Dickens has found it hard to avoid. That's oh, good work from Ward. You heard the smack of that combination, left-right, both of them landing on the jaw, I think, of Jazza Dickens. Dickens tried to respond with a right hook, and he's trying to plant his feet and load up more with his punches, but he's finding Ward irritatingly difficult to find clean. He's reversed the roles here as Ward. Usually you see... You you hear the, the, the terminology in terms of a, a, a safe ball being awkward. It's because they sit back and they force the opponent to lead off and fall short. But here, he's reversed it, hasn't he? What he's doing, Ward on that back foot, he's making Jazza Dickens lead off. A lot of times, Jazza Dickens is actually falling short. Clever boxing. Well, it's a, a fight of clever boxing. It's not a toe-to-toe -to -toe slugfest, as some would say. Not a a real bruising battle as yet it's more technical feet Dickens is finding his opponent frustrating and there's not a lot in the rounds though John I'll say that but for me Ward is nicked another round there so into the fifth Chancellor Dickens who yearns for an attempt to fight once again at world level doesn't feel that he really got into the fight against Rigondeau one punch effectively after a a real 
cat and mouse chess match sort of an opening. Yeah, he was very disappointed indeed, wasn't he, Dickens? And um, he really feels that he'll box better at world level. And I'm afraid, you know, he's got to come through tests like this. And Ward's not short of ambition either. He thinks that he believes at a higher. He thinks that he belongs at a higher level as well. And maybe if he can win this, he will prove it. That's a nice left-hand lead from Ward beating Dickens to the punch. He can just threw a, a nice right hook around the guard there, though, John, also. So it was a nice shot. But again, Ward quicker with the feet. I think Dickens has, has maybe got to double up his attacks a little bit more and, and try and push Ward back to the ropes. At this tempo, Ward seems to be, oh, well, just as I say, that he gets caught with a couple of good shots from Dickens. That was better. Well, he needs them, doesn't he? Not had too many punches like that, Dickens. But that's the best punch of the round so far. Just the main event here, still to come after this one. Josh Warrington. Even round, John, that one. Good shot there. That was a great shot from Ward. Dickens early on in the round had some, some better moments. Close round to score. Again, all these rounds are fairly close. Maybe that that maybe nicked it for Ward. Uh, for Ward. But, well, that's how Rich has got it by a couple of points. Ward's trainer also looks after Peter and Daniel Cope. Gary Fox as well. All good northern area level fighters converted a stable didn't he into a gym in the yeah he has that's his house that's his house he, he makes that joke doesn't he and when people ask him who's in his stable <laughs> people are literally in his yeah. stable and Thomas Ward is doing really well the non-fighting brother Jimmy's here as well, cheering him on somewhere at ringside. Had a couple of fights and decided it hurts too much. Left his brothers to get on with it. Thomas said he was just five years old when he followed his older brother to the gym. And he said, it's all I know. Jazza Dickens. He'd have hoped that it had all come a bit too soon for Ward. The evidence so far suggests that that might not be an accurate assessment. Oh, that's good again from Ward. Nice jab. It's a clever display, isn't it, up to now, from Ward. And you've got Ward well clear. I've got a little, even a little bit wider than you have, Richie. I think the better boxing's come from Ward. Let's just see if the, if the judges are going to appreciate those boxing skills. Sometimes judges see, see it differently, don't they? Well, for me, Dickens has, got, like I said, he, he said it a while ago, now he needed to change the tempo a little bit. He's still going at the same pace. Going to go through the gears a little bit more. I think the actual pace is suiting Ward. He's in and out with defeat, he's planning the attacks, and he's been allowed to do that. The other defeat on Dickens' record came against Kid Gall Galahad. He was, uh, there wasn't a lot in it. He was actually up on a couple of cards and then got, got stopped in the 10th round. That was a British title fight. Came back, won the title from Josh Whale. Then there was the defence against Martin Ward, and now Kid Brother trying to get some sort of family revenge. Just when you think Dickens is going to open up a little bit, John, and, and step on the gas, then he, he goes back to, to just waiting, 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 and, and that, for me, is he's going against him. I think that's better for him there. Now he's starting to up it a little bit. A little bit more of a gamble, he, maybe, it's got to that yeah, stage of the fight, doesn't I think it? so. I think he's behind, he realises it, and uh, he's starting to come forward a little bit more now. Well, I'm sure like the Dickens... Like I the pace is suiting him down to the ground, John Ward. I'm sure his corner will know that he's uh, struggling here they'll be trying to instill a greater sense of urgency into him paul stevenson vastly experienced trainer and he'll know exactly but, uh, 
one of my musical advisors tells me, of course, he came into Salisbury Hill, didn't he? And he was in the Salisbury gym as a junior. My thank you to Big Charles sitting by my side who gave me that little gem. Gets around there from Dickens, he's started to throw a lot more shots now. And that's just made Ward having to readjust and up his work rate a little bit more, but it is a better round from Dickens. The Leeds crowd in great voice. The atmosphere is building and there's not too many spare seats in here now. Loving their boxing. And that's a good sharp right hand from Ward. Dickens committing himself and was punished. He's tried to come forward more in this round. Has he done enough? Seventh round, drawing to its conclusion. Last jab from Dickens, last scoring punch of the round. There is Mr. Richie Woodall. Absolutely, mate. What went wrong last night? A bit unlucky, <laughs> wasn't it? Well, we played all right, to be honest, but... Uh... Well, there's, a little, there's a little bit more urgency about Dickens' work now, isn't it? That last round, I thought he probably just did enough to win it. I've got Ward still a couple of rounds ahead. He's boxing to a game plan, as we spoke about. And it, it's going to be difficult for him to carry this out for 12 rounds, but he's doing it. You know, and he's obviously they're prepared very well. It's in and out with the feet. It's great tactics. He's frustrated, Dickens, but Dickens realises now he's got to get up closer. He's got to up the tempo a little bit. He is boxing better. Cam Ward responds and keep to, to that boxing style that he started with and uh, he's maintained. First direct arena here. It's kind of almost a horseshoe shape, which means that the crowds predominantly on that far side of the ring and they are up close banked away and there's some great vantage points it's a really good arena to watch the boxing and the crowd getting absolutely into it now this is where dickens needs to let his punches go well i'm amazed that he's waiting john he's waiting a little bit too much now he's starting to throw Ward there who just held his feet. Again, good boxing from Ward. That's where Dickens needs to be. He needs to be in it in its short range there. That's a little bit better. But Ward again back on the outside. Dickens the more experienced at going this distance though. The further it goes, is it going to be going into his territory? Has he just got that little bit more ring savvy, that, that fight experience? is closing Dickens trying to claw his way back after the halfway stage Ward seemed to have a clear advantage fights under the ring name Thomas Patrick Ward because when he turned pro there was another Ward Tommy Ward a Leicester cruiserweight who was uh, Flying his trade. Ward's just getting a little bit more disorganised. Well, he's holding his feet a little bit more. Sign of fatigue, I wonder. Yeah, he may just be feeling the pace a little bit. He's done a lot of work on the outside and a lot of movement, remember. So he's now being dragged in a little bit. He's holding his feet, and that brings Jazzy Dickens into the contest. Caught by a nice straight right hand lead when you're explaining that point thrown by Dickens. Now that's no knockdown, and the referee should be having a word about that. He's pulled him round the back of the head. Oh, he's cut. Oh, he's cut. Neil Fallon has a look, and that's a bad one. That is a bad cut. Clash of heads. Well, oh, that's a terrible cut, isn't it? It's just. I don't think this can continue, John. The, oh, the blood's going a... into the eye, isn't it? What a shame. What a shame. Is he going to allow it to go through to the? Is he going to allow it to go through to the bell to let them work at it? It's well, the fight has been stopped. The, now let's have a look here. He's caught around the back of the head, and you'll see he hooks the glove around the back of the head there. Now pulls him down. But I think the heads clash, John. The heads clash. From this end, we might see it. There's a clash of heads oh, there, yeah. maybe. Maybe it's there. See, he's, he's not hitting his head against the floor. Let's have a look from here. It just might be a clash of heads there. there. That's where it came from. It's an accidental head clash. 
So what an unfortunate way for the fight to end. This is Super Bantamweight Champion, Sonny Patrick Rose.